Welcome. It seems right now to talk about what's happening with sterling. As of this moment, we are awaiting the statement today at the Tory party conference from the Chancellor's Exchequer, Kwasi Kwarteng, after his mini budget saw sterling empty out. And we saw it down against the whole basket of currencies. Of course, when looking at currencies, you have to do it in a relative uh, framework against other currencies around the world. And as we know, in this period where we're seeing tightening of monetary policy, it's doing all sorts of things to a number of currencies. And of course, we've seen uh, recent highs for the US dollar. So that's pushing sterling down as well. But also the fact we've got what some believe here is a, a crisis of confidence in sterling. Let's take a look now at some of the charts around this with a regular guest, Ron William from RW Advisory. Ron, welcome. Uh, thanks for your time. When we spoke about putting this together, we didn't know about the most recent developments that we've heard about this uh, debate going on within the Conservative Party about the 45p top rate of tax. Was it going to come down? Was it going to stay out? We now know that that's likely to stay where it always was. But that's a little bit of a sideshow compared to what we've seen for sterling recently. And I know as a technical analyst, you've been looking at this uh, with charts and sort of some of the long term cycles that apply. Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, it's a non-consensus uh, mini budget that uh, appeared at a, at a critical point in the market. And from a behavioral point of view, there is certainly a negative spiral uh, that has triggered a crisis of confidence in the UK's leadership, economy and markets. And serendipitously, when we look back at historical patterns that either repeat or rhyme, this chimes with a 30 year anniversary of the 1992 ERM crisis, an early stage of Brexit uh, some time ago, that fueled a moment uh, of pound speculation, which is why we now see um, the pressure points uh, both in the pound, but of course, as we saw um, in the uh, bond market and the local stock market too. Let's bring up your first chart then and talk us through what's going on because it highlights exactly what you're talking about here on the far left there. You see that uh, rise in the 10 year yield spike and this uh, pressure we've got for sterling against the US dollar. Uh, but also, as you say, in the context of what's happening in the equity markets, so three very interesting charts doing their own thing. Give us some more depth. So key technical inflection point, and that's reflecting uh, the bearish uh, market sentiment that was already in place pre uh, mini budget, but of course, uh, it, it's a perfect storm of of the sentiment that that was already in position and some of the non-consensus uh, views that were shared thereafter. If we look at the market, we can see that the real crisis was actually in the government bond uh, side, with uh, the worst uh, daily move I think in forty years. Uh, 10-year yield spiking up and this is really what hit pension funds uh, and mortgage brokers quite hard uh, because this is this is ultimately how they price uh, their their products um looking to the top right we see the pound uh, dropping broadly across g10 fx rates not just the pound uh, but against the euros you mentioned uh, and other rates uh, but the, the pound versus the dollar really came into uh, the, the key focus because it was hitting all-time uh, lows. And when we say all-time lows, we mean breaking the 1985 lows. So that's, that's a real uh, headline-breaking move um, on pound-dollar, uh, which is a reflection of both the pound and the dollar, uh, pound weakness and, and uh, dollar strength. Um, and then lastly, FTSE 100 um, pushing to the downside uh, and breaking under uh, its year-to-date uh, top pattern, uh, as, as you can see, they're looking like we're going to roll further down lower as part of the global uh, uh, unwind in risk appetite. Well, let's, um, let's look at this as well in the context of where we are on, on a live chart for sterling, because it, it's interesting, as I said, in the context of what we've got today uh, with that statement and, of course, this debate within the Tory party about just how they're going to engage with finding ways around what is perceived to be a financial crisis. If we bring up this chart of sterling against the US dollar, um, you've drawn a, a Fibonacci on the far right hand side. You've got this spike lower down here uh, to 103.30. This is the sterling dropping against that stronger US dollar. And as you said, down to levels we've never seen since decimalization. And I remember decimalization in the very early 1970s. Uh, but we haven't been this low ever since the decimalization um, point. But we've got this little mini rebound. How are you trading this from a, a current perspective? So from a trading perspective, I've been short uh, into the move down as part of that extended trend, uh, which ultimately failed last year at the big uh, 140 level when we last spoke um, about pound dollar. Uh, that trend has been strong down. But as, as you've 
uh, highlighted there right here and now on the live screens, there is a sharp oversold bounce, which is expected um, after such a big, uh, uh, meter, uh, a big um, overshoot to the downside. Uh, now, what's interesting for a lot of people looking at this from a trading perspective um, is the, uh, the behavioral context of the candle patterns, which are better visually, but also in terms of sentiment uh, measures, um, and particularly the, the biggest impulsive candle, you can see that the big red candle, uh, the midpoint of that candle at around 110.50 uh, will be a make or break level for the market. So we're currently trading above it. Uh, but if we hold above it and then push a, a, a higher uh, to back to new highs above the September 13th time, looking at my chart now, uh, that's around 117.40. And then, of course, uh, uh, the moving averages thereafter. If we hold above the pivot point and the moving averages thereafter, uh, that, that will imply a strong and sustainable recovery. If not, uh, then it's down uh, back again, resuming that downtrend and likely uh, into that all-time extreme low. Okay, well, picking up on the points we have alluded to, this long-term pattern that is uh, developing, uh, and taking a look at some of the this, the cycles. Now, we've spoken about sterling two or three times in the last three or four years, some uh, significant points in that long-term chart. If we uh, bring up a, a long-term chart to look back uh, to see exactly what is happening in terms of some of those cycles, you can perhaps maybe talk us through uh, where we go from here uh, because quite clearly one's eye is drawn to the far right hand side when you talk about parity reality. But talk to us a little bit more about this mid-cycle anniversary level uh, that we've seen so many points in the market meet. Yes, so this is truly history in the making in terms of um, how a powerful market cycle, eight years, uh, according to this chart, um, has uh, coincided with each major low since the end of Bread and Woods. We've looked at this chart uh, over the last few years, uh, as each of these inflection points have kicked in, uh, the most significant time, of course, was uh, into Brexit 2016. As we were crashing lower, uh, this chart suggested um, when that would, you know, uh, uh, the extent of that move, um, and and also, of course, the timing. It includes the 1985 Plaza Accord, 92 ERM uh, crisis, 2000 uh, TMT crash, and 2008 uh, GFC, and then as just mentioned, 2016 Brexit, and ultimately it expects a major bottom into the next year or two. But what that means is uh, down for now, as that bottom is created, and, and the last time we spoke, as you just mentioned, was at the midpoint of the latest cycle uh, where the market was trading up at 140 post-COVID, uh, experiencing uh, the double kind of negative effects um, of uh, uh, the, the Brexit uh, uh, vote in, in terms of reflecting what that all meant and, and the uncertainty thereafter, uh, because we didn't follow through uh, immediately uh, with, with a resolution. And then COVID um, hit, and then ultimately the market itself failed at 140 and pushed down lower. Uh, ultimately, all of this, again, reflects the negative behavioral sentiment, uh, I mean, locally in the market, but also on pound dollar. Um, and according to the work of uh, uh, the life cycle pattern developed by Tony Plummer, the sterling is in a transition cycle, uh, which is the first cycle of an evolutionary phase. Normally, this means a sell-off that alters belief systems, and such fundamental change is not an event, but a staged process. And so further down for now, as that market bottom completes in the next year or two. It's interesting, isn't it, uh, when looking over that 20-year uh, period from the far left-hand side of the chart, um, you've got those, what, the ERM crisis, the TMT crash, the uh, grand financial crisis, all that area of 140 has been support. All of a sudden, we've crashed through that. and We've used it twice as resistance, and it's now got this uh, big um, uh, propulsion, if you like, on the downside. So even if we do get a recovery, that area there of 140 is going to be one heck of a level to get through in order to start seeing some uh, blue sky above that, uh, that line, of which has been so much so important to us. Absolutely. An important make or break level, and it has been that uh, for four decades now. Um, and so for the pound to really show resolution, not just against uh, the dollar, but in general, as a broad uh indicator, we do need to see uh, it, it excel above 140 over the medium to long term. Uh, right here and now, if we look at the volatility signature uh, going back through history, uh, it's approximately 30%. And so if you measure that from the major 
breakdowns from a new market regime, which is what I've done there on the chart, it shows that parity is a likely reality. Let's look at this in the um, in the context of uh, some other measurements. And some people will, will look at this and think, well, look, hang on, we're really oversold at this point. This is an opportunity to probably establish a bottom. What do you put together as an argument, perhaps maybe to counter that or maybe to support that view? Where do you think the argument lies? Ultimately, the, the, the market charts reflect uh, the, 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 the uh, sentiment, but also what is being priced in uh, to the market. And yes, we are currently oversold in the near term, but because it is such a big uh, down move, uh, which has happened before, um, and as you just saw, that can, can happen uh, in, in a more extended way, 30% or more from a, a new uh, market regime breakdown, uh, then I, I think we have to look at uh, look at both sides of the trade. Certainly, look at this oversold bounce and see if it is viable and sustainable. And if not, uh, be very vigilant of the downside resumption and the risks that it might unlock. Well, let's bring up a, a chart explaining that in 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 technical detail. You got this channel on the left hand uh, chart. You got this channel uh, giving you this trend regression. So your best case is what you're going to continue to decline to meet that bottom line of falling support base case for now is, is to follow the oversold bounce and see if it's viable and sustainable if so continue to, to follow that move otherwise if we do see a, 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 a resumption below the pivot point of the impulsive move down um, and ultimately the all-time uh, uh, low um, then we have to start looking at this chart uh, which shows uh, how low pound uh, dollar can go uh, which is ultimately parity as a likely reality, and thereafter, uh, as a as a potential overshoot of that uh, of the extreme move into uh, ninety seven fifty. So these are uh, uh, more uh, extreme risk levels uh, that are likely. And incidentally, the market uh, is pricing in parity on pound dollar on a sixty percent probability right now. Uh, so it also seems to be. Uh, ref uh, uh, aligned with what we see on the charts. Um, and if you recall that long-term cycle chart we looked at had a historical volatility signature that tied in with parity. And you can see here uh, more of a closer examination as these re trend regression uh, lines also align uh, and produce a price confluence. Uh, on, on the right, we can just see in, uh, that the market has extended down lower in the past, and so there is further downside risk. Uh, if we look at momentum deviations from the long-term 200-day moving average, uh, this, this mini crash was strong, but not as strong as the GFC of 2008 and the ERM crisis of uh, 92, which is now uh, triggered a 30-year anniversary. And then just at the bottom right-hand side, F3, we can see that in the options market, sentiment is also still bearish. So th these are all a mixture of factors that need to be considered when, when asking what next. Well, when looking at what next, one has to consider, of course, what else is happening in the currency markets. As I said at the top, when looking at um, a, a particular currency, it's only relevant when you look at it with relative moves in other currencies. How has sterling performed against some of the other major currencies that we would consider to be um, uh, sort of counterparts, if you like? Well, we can look at this from both a technical and fundamental perspective. And I often like to combine the two as well as macro as part of a triad approach. Um, and certainly this helps ask the question, is the pound in a genuine crisis or has a long overdue correction lower um, occurred? The debate is clearly polarized and there are many uh, respected uh, experts out there arguing both cases. Uh, but essentially, if we look at the pound depreciation, it is still relatively better value to its euro and yen peers. And what we're looking at here is uh, euro, yen, pound, and the dollar uh, measured fundamentally based on uh, REAR, the real effective exchange rate uh, model, which is an industry standard. And it shows uh, the pound in blue there uh, still holding uh, its, its, its drop uh, stronger than the euro and the yen. Uh, and if you look at the flip side, the, the dollar, which is the other side of the pound uh, dollar equation and also the other major currencies, um, is overstretched uh, to the high side with more than 20% year-to-date gains. There's an interesting point to pick up on there as well about the US dollar. I'm hearing more and more anecdotal 
uh, and and pure front full in the face evidence from companies that they are in the US screaming out extreme pain uh, on their corporate balance sheets because of this uh, strong dollar. And there doesn't seem to be any let up either uh, because the Federal Reserve is uh, at the moment at least on this um, uh, determination to conquer inflation at all costs with possibly a recession coming along as well. Some calling it the Fed is trashing what good work has been done over the last couple of years in trying to establish a firm foothold for the US economy. But here we have this US dollar. Uh, how about looking at a long term chart on the dollar? What are we seeing? Where Where's the top? What do you feel is happening? Well, I, I do believe that the, the dollar king will likely uh, uh, lose its crown at some point in time. The question is timing. Um, and if we look at this chart, it, 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 it at least highlights the elastic band uh, risk uh, that the dollar is currently facing. Um, over time in history, uh, the, the historic threshold, pain threshold on the pound uh, is between 15 to 20 percent. And every time it, it surpasses that, which is currently the situation, um, there is a systemic risk, uh, which, which is uh, to typically broad based. And as you just mentioned there, uh, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence of that. Now, the dollar has been strong, uh, I mean, because of, because of just the, the technical trend, uh, the safe haven flows. And, as, uh, and of course, central bank uh, policy hikes, which have um, uh, been faster uh, than its counterparts. But ultimately, at some point, the shoe will likely drop, question mark as to when and, and what that will be. But certainly, uh, both the threshold uh, level that I'm highlighting here and the historical um, event risk uh, of what happens when uh, currency uh, is too strong for too long um, is something that we need to be considering uh, in, in, in the near term future. I, I look forward to actually discussing this in more depth as a separate uh, market insight uh, on a technical and macro basis, because it's, I think, uh, nearing a, a top signal as we speak. That is fascinating, given the commentary we're getting from some economists suggesting the Fed is now beginning to look a little bit more about some of the damage that's been done. I mean, I guess that the Fed was fairly early into the move, wasn't it, in interest rates? I guess as soon as they think that they've uh, done their job, they'll start um, restricting the upward move, at least, and possibly start to eat into some of the gains we've seen in interest rates. I mean, I, I imagine, and this is a question really for someone, I know you're a technical analyst, but fundamentally, I imagine it's when the Fed is done uh, that we can see some sort of relief of the dollar. Or do you see other factors coming into play that could give us some respite in this upward move in the dollar? Certainly, it's a central bank policy will be part of that. The market uh, is, is pricing in that, that the Fed will likely uh, unwind its cycle going into uh, the new year, at least, uh, based, based on various proxies. Uh, but the technical chart, which is the be all end all in terms of market sentiment, is also suggesting that we already have a triple uh, uh, price and momentum divergence, which has been uh, building over the last few months. That's already showing a, uh, a slowdown. Uh, there are cycle measures that are uh, suggesting uh, downside risk on the dollar going into year end. Um, and right now I'm watching at the dollar across you know, all, the, all the major proxies, whether it be uh, currencies, but also commodities like gold, uh, to see how those counter dollar trades will likely snap back um, if and when the dollar does turn. Yeah, if and when. Also, one of the big questions is on. Thanks so much indeed for your, for your time. We got a little bit away from sterling, but it's all part of the same picture, of course. But I thank you indeed uh, for your time and your thoughts and uh, the charts that you presented. That's Ron William from RW Advisory. And as we've been reporting, we'll be looking out for more evidence from US companies. It's the third quarter earnings season up very soon. And doubtless, many of those companies that uh, have been uh, crying pain uh, will continue to do so, so long as we see the dollar rising. Uh, but it all culminates in this drop in sterling. That was, as I said, Ron William talking about the direction of sterling and the likely moves we could well see uh, ahead uh, when things uh, pick up but after the Tory party conference.